Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin and I'm the newest member of the YouTube sports card community. I've been a long time watcher, but I've finally taken the plunge to make my videos thanks to the support and encouragement of my brother. I'm looking forward to sharing my two and a half year and growing collection with all of you. Females are certainly the minority in this community. However, I feel we can provide a unique perspective and have been welcomed wholeheartedly in the community. A big thank you to She Got Sports and Baseball Card Babe for paving the way. So my collection is passionately centered on baseball. I enjoy playing, watching, and learning about the game's rich history. Baseball exudes a certain kind of magic that can't be explained until you felt it. And those who know how baseball feels deep inside the soul will never stop loving it. It's become a part of who we are as people, and it has given me a passion and something that I can love unconditionally in good times and bad. I'm excited to share my collection with you, and it ranges from vintage to modern cards, autographs, and memorabilia. I'm also looking forward to sharing player-specific stories and cool experiences that I've had along the way too. Now, my favorite team is probably the Detroit Tigers. You'll see that my collection puts an extra emphasis there, and that's actually where we're gonna start today. So for my first video, I'm going to be highlighting my 1933 Gaudi cards. Now the Gaudi Gum Company was an American chewing gum company that started in 1919. In 1933, Gaudi produced a 240 card set, also called Big League Chewing Gum. These were the first baseball gum cards. And because of this, Gaudi is considered one of the big three baseball card sets along with the T206 and 1952 Tops. So not surprisingly, my cards are all of Detroit Tigers players. I wanted to collect those that made a major impact or did something unique among their playing time with Detroit. So the first guy that we have up is Tom Bridges. So Tom was responsible for giving up Babe Ruth's 700th home run. Now he had a great season in 1935 he went 21-10 and 10 with 23 complete games. The most important of those was the last game of the 1935 World Series. The score was tied 3-3 three three in the top of the ninth. Bridges gave up a leadoff triple to Stan Hack, but he retired the next three batters without the runner on third scoring. That's an incredible feat. So in the bottom of the ninth, Goose Goslin drove in the winning run with two outs and the Tigers won their first championship. So this card right here, it's graded a two and a half by PSA, a very nice looking two and a half. We can see that it's off centered left to right with the corners being rounded. However, the color is fantastic and overall eye appeal of the card presents very well. There are no creases throughout the card. There is no paper loss on the back, which looks very clean as well. So this is a really good example of buying the card and not the grade. So very pleased to add this uh, 1933 Gaudi Tom Bridges to the collection. Okay, the next guy that I'm going to talk about is Fred Marbury. Now, Fred, he would not begin to gain true recognition for many of his accomplishments until the save was created. So there we have Mr. Marbury right there. So the save, as we all know it today, that became a pitching statistic in the 1960s. And later research was done to identify saves that were earned in the past. So Fred Marbury here, he was the first player to record 100 career saves, retroactively, of course. Now, I, I love this card. I love it for a few reasons. The first of which, I love his pose. He's got his hands over his head, 
as he's about to get ready to deliver a pitch. So I think that that looks fantastic. The color is very saturated and rich, so that really helps make the card present well. It's very clean on the back too. From that red saturation, we can actually see it bleeding through the front of the card onto the back a little bit, but nonetheless, this is just a, a really great example of a card from the 1930s. And you certainly can't go wrong with that. So that is Mr. Fred Marbury. So the next card that I'm going to show you is George Ewell. So there we have Mr. Ewell right there. So the interesting thing about him is that Babe Ruth credited George Ewell as being the toughest pitcher that he ever faced. Now, this being said, Babe Ruth, as great as he is, batted 336 against Ewell, but out of 714 career home runs, he only got four off of Ewell. Ewell actually had the second most strikeouts of Ruth by a pitcher with 25. Only Lefty Grove had more with 37. So this card is, is particularly uh, special for that reason. The other thing is it's, it's a very nice uh, example of a four. Again, PSA graded. The color, the, the blue really stands out. Very rich. If we turn it over onto the back, again, looks very, very nice, very presentable. The centering is, is off. But again, what, what I care about in cards is the overall eye appeal, right? What does it look like to me, you know, regardless of the grade? And this card just exudes all of the things that, that I look for. It, it stands out. It looks nice to me. So that's the George Yule. So the next gentleman that we're going to talk about is Billy Rogel. There he is right there. So Billy and Charlie Geringer, they are the original double play combination in Detroit, preceding Alan Trammell and Lou Whitaker. Rogel led the American League shortstops in fielding percentage in 1935, 36, and 37. He twice paired with Geringer to lead the league in double plays. The two actually played over a thousand games together, making them one of the longest tenure double play combinations in the history of the game. So as a Tigers fan, you cannot go wrong with Billy Rogel, Charlie Geringer, Sweet Lou, and Alan Trammell. Now, a story that I'd like to share with you about really Billy Rogel actually involves Dizzy Dean. So as the story goes, Dizzy Dean was pinch running. A grounder was hit to Geringer. He turned and threw the ball to Rogel, who forced out Dean at second. Rogel then fired the ball squarely into Dean's forehead on the relay throw to first. So can you picture that? And then the ball ricocheted off Dean's head and landed over 100 feet away in the outfield. Now, I guess Dizzy Dean was a bit of a jokester, and his comment was that the doctors x-rayed his head and found nothing. And Rogel actually said that if he'd known his head was there, he would have thrown the ball harder. So, different times back in the day for sure, but uh, a great story nonetheless that I wanted to share with you. The next card in my 1933 Gaudi set was actually a gift from my brother. I love this card. This is Heine Minouche. Right there, gorgeous looking card. Great eye appeal, great color. Centering is off left to right, but really, to me, doesn't take away from the overall appearance of the card. So Heine Manouche, what's interesting about uh, him is that he trailed Babe Ruth 
for the batting championship going into the last day of the 1926 season. On the final day, the Tigers played a doubleheader, and Manouche overtook Ruth by getting six hits in nine at-bats. So that's pretty impressive. And by taking the batting crown, he actually defeated Ruth uh, out of getting the triple crown. So when Heine was interviewed in 1964, he actually cited beating Ruth on the last day of the 1926 season as one of the two events in his career. Uh, the other was playing in the World Series that most stood out for him. So that's Mr. Heine Manouche. And the next one that I'm going to show you here, this one is certainly one of my favorites out of the Gaudi set. This man really needs uh, no introduction, uh, but it is none other than Mr. Mickey Cochran. So Mickey Cochran, Baseball Hall of Famer, he's recognized on the wall at Comerica Park, two-time AL MVP, three-time World Series champ, just incredible. One of the things that I find most impressive is that he was the catcher and the manager of the night of the Tigers 1935 World Series championship team. And although I realize that was common back in the day for players to both play a position and manage, I still think it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Uh, Mickey Cochran was the namesake that Mickey Mantle's father chose to, to name his son after. I also really enjoy collecting um, Mickey Mantle cards, which I'll show in, in a later video. So that's a, an interesting uh, fact and, and a great, great card here. Graded a four and a half. Again, incredible. This one is actually centered quite well. The color, very rich. The back, I mean, looks absolutely fantastic. You can't even believe that this card is from the 30s. So this is definitely one of my favorites, not only of, of the Gaudis, but, uh, but my entire collection. Okay, so last, but certainly not least, I feel like the set would not be complete without this this fellow. Some people say that his true rookie card is actually the 1926 exhibit set. Um, I, I actually prefer the look of the 1933 Gaudi, so whether it's his true rookie or not, you have to collect what you like, and I certainly love this card. This is the Mechanical Man, Mr. Charlie Geringer. I love that pose. He looks so menacing. The absolute definition of a ball player right there. And it's funny because he, he looks a little menacing there, but Geringer actually had a reputation as being rather quiet and unassuming. Mickey Cochran actually joked and said, Charlie says hello on opening day, goodbye on closing day, and in between he hits 350. So he just went about, did his work, and did it fantastically as he's one of the greatest second baseman of all time. He's certainly the Tigers' greatest second baseman. You, you'd you wind him up on opening day and, and you'd forget about him. He was incredibly reliable um, statistically and as a person. So proud to to add him to the to the collection. And with it being graded in a four and a half, a great card, this one is very clean, very white on the back, not a lot of staining. Just an absolutely brilliant example, and I'm proud to have it in the collection. There we go, Mr. Charlie Geringer. Okay, so I'd just like to thank everyone for watching. Thanks for caring. I really enjoyed getting to share this, this first video with you, the first of many more. I think it's going to be a great experience here on YouTube, and I'm excited to be a part of, of this community and to keep it going. So I'll see you in the next one. Take care.